Hey guys, it's Mercury. Uh, this week I have a, one of the hardest machines I've done. This is Mantis. I was actually ready to make this last night a whipped by video, but I did a little more digging and was able to actually come up with a solution before the box went from active to retired. So I'm going to be giving you guys kind of a, a cliff notes of how this went, primarily because I fumbled through a lot of it, um, and a lot of it took a while to run. So first we did our standard Nmap scan. I'm just going to bring that up for you guys now. And this was the A scan. And so this had quite a lot going on on it. You should be able to see pretty quickly. It's running Microsoft DNS domain service. It's running Kerberos. It's running a lot of MSRP stuff, uh, MSRPC stuff, which indicates it's a domain controller. Um, we also see it's running uh, MS SQL, which we'll end up using later. So my first stumbling was that I had found this and I started fumbling through the blog found on port 8080. Um, I spent more time than I'll care to admit locked into the idea that there was some way that I could work my way through this box with information that I would find on here or enumerating through here. And in the end, I didn't find anything. So in the background, I had run another scan. And this scan was on a, a range of selected ports. These are ports that I use later on in the exploit when I'm working with my reverse shells and I'm trying to send things out. And it just ended up being pure luck. So the, those ports are like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 3, 7, 1, 3, 3, 8, 1, 3, 3, 9, and E, 1, 3, 3, oh, sorry, 3, 1, 3, 3, 7. Um, just things that, because I'm stupid and think they're funny, I use them as my reverse ports. And doing another box off a Volnhub machine, I believe one of these was actually occupied by another service and was having issues getting a shell. So I decided in the background, as I go through things, I might as well run and make sure that the ports that I kind of just like to use by default are open. And I found another HTTP, HTTP server running on 1337. And I did a directory in num of that. So we will bring this guy up. And this was just a deer buster run. It had the medium word list. And I let it run for quite some time. I think I actually stopped some folders because I just didn't think I was going to see anything, especially after I found secure notes, which brings us to here. So if we bring up this secure notes folder, this pretty much gave you a pretty big avenue into the box. It lets us know that the username for the SQL DB is admin and that the DB name is Orchard DB. So going forward from there, we don't have a password though, but if we go back and we look at the name of this device, dev notes, this long string, it just, it didn't look right to me. So first I had copied it to my local directory and I ran it against uh, I believe base64 was the first step. We'll just verify that in a second. Yes, yeah, so here's what we pulled. And if we base64 thing to tell it to decode, we get the string. And I this is another point where I will admit that uh, I got lost for a while. Let's just copy this guy. And so at first I thought, all right, it must be a hash. Let's run this to hash identifier and nothing's found. I had also tried running this guy through hash identifier before I even realized it was base 64. And I was like, oh geez, it's a Haval or a tiger. It's like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not breaking those, or at least it's going to take a while to break those. Not that they're terribly, terribly, terribly impressive crypto schemes by today's standards. Um, but I was eventually able to figure out after a lot of attempts, as you can see, this went from thing one to thing two to thing eight before I eventually figured it out that if we bring up thing two, uh, I, I eventually sat here and I looked at it and I'm going highest value that I see is F. So this has to be, um, hexadecimal. So I said, all right, let's, let's try converting this out. So we do XXD postscript. Well, the issue is if we just XXD uh, thing two, we're going to get these columns and this guy. 
right? If we tell it to reverse, it's not going to give us anything. So if we have it only look at the postscript, we get the password out of it. Um, I believe we could also just try and directly feed XXD this string and it would work, but this is just the, the easiest way of doing it. It took a lot longer than I care to admit to figure out how to do that the right way. Um, so I tend to be a, a command line whore. I like to do things directly from the command line. So when we connect to the SQL server, which we spotted running before, and that we now know both the username, the password, and the database we're working against, we're able to step through the database and maybe find our next avenue of attack. So I used SQL shell. We're going to tell it the server is 10.10.10.52. We are going to tell it the database is this ORCID database. And we're going to tell it the user is admin. And I really hope I copied that. If not, we got to go back down a little bit. Let's just grab this guy. Problem with clearing your screen so much. Come back to you. And we are in. Now, this was not the easiest thing to step through. I ended up having to read quite a few guides and spend quite a while figuring out how to navigate around SQL Shell. Um, so what I have found first, I'm going to show you guys exactly my steps of how I went through here. Um, first, I wanted to list what tables there were in the database. This ended up being pretty massive. And as you can see, this is almost insurmountable. There's 483 rows that it pulled up for us. But thanks to the magic of Tmux and searching, we can look for users. It's telling us in the last 10,000, which also includes the last time I ran through this, we've got this blog, Orchard Users Part Record, which is a table that should contain users. So we'll jump back to the end, and we are going to standard SQL command select all from there, and tell it to go. Hmm, I must have missed something there. Syntax near. That's a very embarrassing mistake. I'll leave that in. Bad SQL syntax. So we have this admin. It's a hashed password. Um, looks like it might just be base64. Uh, but we have a user. Now, we know this thing's running Kerberos. We don't know if it's vulnerable against um, the golden ticket exploit, which... Spoiler, it is. Um, otherwise, there's really not much of a way in. So now we have a user. We know that he's on the HTTP.local, that he's on, username is James, and we have a password for him, which we've already copied conveniently. So pull that. James pass. We have password for the user. So our next step is to use this exploit, which is, if we come to, this is explaining how to use the golden ticket exploit. Um, so basically what this did, it allowed us to take a user and basically give them higher level privileges. You can take any domain user and upgrade them to effectively a domain admin. Um, so first, you need to make sure that you have all of these installed or this will not work as well i used a script uh i used pykeck which is a kerberos enumeration and uh, exploitation module it's available on github i'll link it in the description in there we have this ms14-068.py so if we attempt to run that it's going to tell us we need a username at the specified domain, we need their user SID, and we need the domain controller IP address. So we have, right now, this we know we have the James user. We have, uh, we do not have the user SID yet, but we have the domain controller address, so we need to get the user SID. 
So how do we do that? We're going to use, or at least I'm going to use RPC client, because that's what I know how to use. Uh, there are other ways to get into this. So RPC client, and we're going to tell it 10, 10, 10, 52. Uh, and we're going to spec the user. And then we're going to grab their password again, and just to make sure we have it. And now you can fire off a help if you don't know your way around, but it is huge. Um, we're actually not too terribly far off from where we need to be. So if we find, we see here the lookup names command will convert names to SIDs, which is what we want. So we're going to do lookup names James, and we get a SID. Now I've already copied that, but we would just grab this guy, come to here, and now we go back and we look at MS14. It's telling us we need the user, so we're going to say http.local user SID and the domain controller address we know is 10 10 10 52 because we're trying to break the domain controller right now. I'm going to give it its password and I did something wrong here. It's telling that something did not go right. So let's go back up, make sure james.htb.local user realm, username, user key, KDC, target realm, target service. Let's just try that again. I didn't grab the SID also. So then we grab his SID. And this is what I meant by this was a very fumbly machine. Um, I had a lot of attempts just to get the commands to run correctly. Including misspellings. Dyslexia gets you every time. successfully ran and so what we need to do is make sure this is cached otherwise when we attempt to connect it's not going to work um, this article actually specifies that if we come down um, we can try and k in it let's do this k in it didn't work so let's try this K list so this still has active tickets from last time we came through here so we're going to go back to as if we had not done this before and now we're in K list and as you can see there's nothing found in the credentials cache this is how it would be if you were in this state at this point so now what we can do is we can copy Ticket granting ticket to temp jrb5 cc underscore zero and then run k list again and now we have a ticket uh, Kerberos tickets I believe are good for 
10 hours, 20 hours, something. It's an odd amount like that. I should know it from doing CISSP. So now we have this Kerberos ticket and we, this has been upgraded to a golden ticket. So this will allow us access. And in order to do that now, we're gonna use SMB client to connect. We are going to specify, I very much had to refer to this article a lot. Uh, this is from Apache's Confluence Wiki. Um, and it just gives you a good description of how these commands should work. Uh, I did have to play around with them quite a bit. Knockpass also has, um, this Knockpass article also has a good explanation for how your command should be structured in order to get you in. Um, so as you can see, we'll do SMB client. Uh, ooh, there's one thing I did not show yet that will be required in order to make this next step work. So I'm gonna list my etc host file. And so we had to add, I ended up having to add all of these in order for it to work. It kept on proccing errors during the SMB connect where it wasn't resolving if it didn't have all of these variations. I'm not quite sure why I wasn't following that. Maybe someone else can explain that better. Um, and the other, the last thing that I actually need to make sure is there is uh, for resolving conflicts. Okay, we're still set on the name server. So we need to use that as our name server. Uh, it is running DNS and we need to use it. Otherwise it will not connect correctly. Um, so now we can go and SMB client. Uh, so we're gonna tell it HTB dot local and what we want to access is Mantis, which we know is its shared name from looking at the nmap file earlier and what it was able to enumerate when it ran the versions. And I always like to use debugging three. Um, I needed this and Wireshark running to see what I was doing wrong earlier when I was attempting to exploit this. Uh, my original attempt ran really, really, really long. So we're gonna fire that off and we are now in. And so if we go through this, as you can see what it's doing, it is sticking me on a local, effectively a, a a VPN with it where it's kind of adding an extra Ethernet interface that it's connecting over to. And then we're connecting to 10, 10, 10, 52 on the specified ports. And it's doing all of these handshakes. And now we could find, we go to CD. Uh, I don't know what I just did there. We're going to users. And going down into these, if we go into James, desktop there would be user and back up a step because this is a golden ticket we're a domain admin there's nothing preventing us from going into the domain administrator folder and finding root txt um, this was a machine that unfortunately was definitely above my current skill level. If it wasn't for a lot of stumbling and a lot of fumbling, I would not have made it into this machine. Uh, um, I have not watched Ip's video on it yet. I'm assuming he explains everything far, far, far better. Um, this video will hopefully be going up in a little bit and we'll be able to, I'll be able to then go through and read some other people's walkthroughs and watch some guides and better understand what exactly it is that I did here. And I'll try and link those in the description um, after this video goes up. Thanks for watching.